Good morning, everyone. How are you guys? Did you guys sleep well? Same. <laughs> All right, so just a quick recap. Who gave talk one? What was it about? Who gave talk two? And what was it about? Who gave talk three? And what was it about? Who gave talk four? And what is it about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we learned about how to be a fool for God. What is worship and the heart of worship? So now what we need to do, we need to take those three things together and put them into one. And that will bring, that'll help us get closer to God. And that will help us bring others closer to God. So one thing we've realized this whole weekend about worship is that it is our desire to be in the presence of God. And that worship is just, it's not just something that is con confined to events, like events like this, to our household events, to um, state events, to surrender. It's things that we do in our daily life activity. And um, one of the most difficult challenges that we're experiencing within our spiritual journey is when we tend to compartmentalize our activities, our day to day. So you have your sports, you have your school, you have CFC on the side, you have your ministry, you have church, you have all these things that you have to do. But where we fall short is when we forget to put God in all those things. And that is what makes us fall short and um, that disconnects us from God. And when we exclude God from our secular day-to-day -day activities, um, without that integration of prayer into our everyday life, we're gonna struggle to learn how to truly worship and surrender to God because worship is prayer and it is also the R word, which is reunion. So when I told you guys originally that worship is also, um, it's not just confined to these, or just for these events, it's also what we were doing yesterday during the workshops. When we played clubbing with uh, keep the beat, slap the bass, uh, calluses, uh, major key. Did I miss somebody? I think I did. <laughs> Who? Oh yeah, the diaphragms, the winners. Oh yeah, ding, ding, dings. Um, so what that did for us yesterday when we all got together and competed against ding-a-ding-dings and slapped that bass is that was a reunion. We were taking our team and putting ourselves together to work with one another to beat ding-a-ding-dings and slap that bass and all the other teams that played. That that was our reunion yesterday besides worship and um, on day one for Okeechobee, a couple of Port Charlotte, West Palm and Broward in Miami, we were all there on day one, and what we did was, we made music out of nothing, like without any instruments. We took it like way old school style, back to caveman days, where we just used our hands, our mouths, um, our fingers, our feet, whatever we could. We slapped our, what was it, huh? And then we had the detonators, the tuk, 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 tuk. and um, the other group says, yeah, yeah, that, the lichon, the lichon group. And so when we start integrating worship and prayer in our day-to-day -day activities, that is when we build our intimacy with God. So how do we take all these three things that we learned with Pat, Chinky, and Kokoi into our daily activities? We do that by first living out in worship. And there's a Bible verse and it goes, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And that's James 1.22. So, what the challenge is is that we came here this weekend to get to know and serve God more and to learn how to truly worship. What we need to start doing is that we need to take that and we need to start seeking God more than just in these events, more than just going to mass, more than just going to adoration. We need to encounter him in any ways that we can. And it all starts with our just changing our perspectives and our prayer life, that the moment that we say a quick prayer just to thank God for our day, that is what builds our connection and our relationship with God. So we have learned so much this weekend about how to do it. And if we don't share the fruitfulness of what we have encountered with God this weekend with others, then others won't get to experience the same encounters that we have experienced this weekend. And as Pat said, Worship just all starts with jamming. That last night when we broke the record of um, our jam session with the most instruments, that even though one area would select their songs to sing it out, 
we all join together as one, one flow, to sing and praise God. And that's when, we all fought, that's when we all fell more in love with praising and worshiping. The moment we joined together as one, that we built each other up, is the moment we all encountered Christ through one another. That when we look to the person right next to us, we can see Christ, right ne- or we can see Christ through them. And so with living in worship, there's also another key aspect um, that'll help us do that. And there's a quote, which I like live off of now that I'm in college because um, I'm doing business finance as my major. And so what I remind myself all the time is that the quote is, the key to success is not money or brains. It's the refusal to never give up. And that applies to worship as well, that no matter what the circumstance is, we don't stop striving towards holiness that we desire to praise God no matter what we're going through, no matter how dark, no matter how bright our days are, we remain faithful to him. So last night during our closing worship, um, for those of you that don't know me, this is not my voice. I, like, I obviously lost it. And so I sat in between Erica and Miggy yesterday. And so we were singing, um, I think we were already on All For You. And like my voice started cracking and I was just like, Oh no, they can probably hear me. This is embarrassing. And the people around me can hear me too, that I'm like, ah, and I was just like, I don't want to sing anymore because I don't sound good. But that's where we also fall short, that worshiping is not about sounding good. It's not about how well you can play your instrument. It's all about how you glorify God and how you build your relationship with him through worship. And so there, um, back in the day, there was also spiritual dryness in my area when I was chapter head. And a lot of the doubts that I had, like I was so worried that we were never gonna be able to come back up again, that there would not be a West Palm to come home to. And throughout the years, um, it was actually two years ago during the last surrender, is when things just started coming into place, that we started getting another couple coordinator, we started getting our music men back up, we started getting our camp back up, and um, that's when, a tr- like we all truly the leaders, we just put ourself, our trust and our faith into God that no matter what was happening, no matter how many doubts we were holding, we were still gonna be okay. And now, what, West Palm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now we're back. So that's how, um, through the prayers and through the worshiping of God, that we were able to build, one each, um, build each other up It was the refusal of us to ever stop striving towards holiness that got us to be where we are today. And I'm not saying that we're the most perfect area out there, but one key factor that I always tell these kids is that to never stop striving, to always seek God in your days, to look for how you can encounter Christ, even if it's not here, even when you're at school, when you're at practice for whatever you do, um, art, band, sports, whatever it is, You always seek Jesus throughout your daily activities. And last night during the Praise Fest, there was a lot of things that went on. But one of the main things that stuck out to me was when Kokoi led us into spontaneous praising about four times. And so what makes spontaneous praising different from here, from when we go home? There is no difference. We can do it either way, no matter where we are. And It's just simply like we don't have to go all out when we're not here. Like we don't have to do, Lord God, you're the king of kings. It it can be as simple as just, thank you, God, for giving me today. And what I did was when I was in high school, my high school was a 30 minute drive away from home. So it was a long car ride. And so what I did was I realized that that's a lot of time to like, I guess, pray and um, I couldn't do my homework anymore because my mom stopped driving me. So then that wasn't anything anymore that I could do. But I started just my morning off, 6.30, just doing the sign of the cross. And what I would sing to is the Kids for Christ Kids Village CD from 2010. So yes, I would start off my day with like deep, 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 deep. And from there, like, I knew that I had a good start, that I was able to praise God within my first 30 minutes of my day that no matter like how tired or how much stuff I had to do, that I knew that at least God had my back during that moment, that I would start off the day knowing that I could depend on him. And so 
we do, we just got to continue to start giving praises to God throughout our day. After every sport you play, raise your hand if you play a sport. A lot of my friends who are athletes would say, in Jesus' name I play and pray, amen. And so that's when, that's Music Men too, that the way we sing and the way we are, we all just give it, we all give our talents back to God. And we saw that during Air Band yesterday and the dance crews, like, what is this, Clout Nine? Tatla, who was Christ the Walkers? Was that what it's called? <laughs> or Christ, <laughs> what were you? Skim Milk, yeah, Skim Milk. And you know, all of you guys, even if I didn't say your names, we took the time to truly praise God for what we had and what we learned. And even me, like I do not have any, I don't know how to play any instruments, I don't sing. And to be honest with you guys, there was a pre-con where I was asked to sing. And I was just like, why? Because I'm not a singer. Um, but the whole point of this weekend was not to teach you how to be a better singer, how to play your instrument better, but how to worship better. And so when we live in worship, we also must be fearless and stand firm in our faith. And I said this at Discovery Camp, so if you were there, I don't know if you'll remember this, but I said that if you wanna be a lawyer, you must defend your faith. If you wanna be a doctor, you need to heal the pain of a wound that a Band-Aid couldn't for your friend. And so that's where it comes in, that we must defend our faith in no matter what the circumstances are. And so yesterday, you guys were all blindfolded, A's and B's, and no matter who we paired you up with, um, the whole point wasn't to try to guess who it was that you were sitting with or holding hands with. It was all about um, encountering Christ through that person, whether or not you could see them or not, that you experienced the love of God through that other person that you were with. And another thing that stuck out to me when I saw you guys and when I was walking people around to get paired up is that this is the moment where it's not intimacy, it's into me you see. And that's what it's like with your personal connection with God, that the moment that you open up your hearts the way that you guys open it up to that A or B person, that is when you built your into me you see with that person, that you opened up your hearts and your minds to whatever that person had to say to you, and you also told that person, and that person prepared their hearts for whatever you had to say with them. And that's exactly what it's like with God in worship, that the moment that we finally surrender and we open up our hearts to God is the moment that we have that firm connection and that we are standing firm in our faith and other things that go on during um, standing firm in your faith like there's a lot of temptations out there like Tito Arvin said it during his exhortation about foot fungus like foot fungus is irritation just like how sin is irritating us sin tempts us to do things that we shouldn't be doing and that's what disconnects us from God so when we reject um, our faith even just by simple things like praying for your meal at school um, or simply just trying to, when we get distracted at Mass and we don't listen to what the priest or the sermon or what the, um, or what the Mass is about, those are the things that are disconnecting us and are weighing us down, and that's what's killing our into me, you see, with God. Those distractions, that foot fungus and the irritation that is, um, that is just disconnecting us, but through into me, you see, when you open up your hearts and your burdens, and you finally just give it all back to God, that's when things start to connect, that you and God, that your relationship is no longer intellectual, it is on a personal level. And with the blindfold activity, with that being said, that even though you guys were blindfolded and you guys couldn't see each other, that intimate relationship you built with each other before you guys um, took off your blindfolds and saw who was sitting in front of you, that is what it's like with God, that with or without a blindfold, you should be able to fully surrender yourself and build that intimacy with God, that without, with or without a blindfold, you can worship in whatever environment you're in. You don't have to be concerned. And that's just like how I was scared, what Erica and Miggy were gonna think about my cracking voice. But then I realized like, they're also in deep prayer too, and we're all praying. So there's nobody here to judge you. And you know, it's all for God no matter what we do. And so with prayer, with living in worship, when we pray, um, there is no harmony or rhythm in a band without practice and discipline. So for all those areas that have already um, took turns, because if you haven't noticed, we've just been alternating areas, because um, that's our one flow routine. We're trying to build each other up 
and get each other hyped up for the Lord. And so one thing I can attest to is knowing, even though I'm not um, a music man and I'm not a music minister, I know that for those areas that did um, go up there and do worship for us, they did two things. They are three things. They prayed, they had discipline, and they practiced. And just like band, prayer is practice and discipline as well. So just like, just like a song, our life will have no rhythm and harmony without that prayer, without that practice. And that matters so much because prayer is the key to establishing a rhythm during our worship. And so what else we have to do in order to carry this back at the home fronts when we return home is that we need to bring prayer into our daily life. And so I talked about earlier how we tend to compartmentalize all of our stuff. We have our separate activities, doing laundry, doing chores, doing schoolwork, doing music men, doing CFC stuff, but then we fail to bring God into these things. But to be honest, there, it, there, should no, there shouldn't be any categories of what this stuff is because it's all integrated with prayer and God. And God just isn't present during church, in the Bibles, during surrender, during our households. He's in, we can encounter him through events and objects. And so an example of that would be when Moses encountered God through a burning bush. Like, it clearly wasn't God standing in front of him, but it was an encounter with God. And to be honest with you guys, we have a bush, which is an event in our life that is burning, but it is up to us to recognize that that burning bush is the presence of God, and we just need our faith to see it. Throughout um, college, I've just been trying to discover like what it is that God wants out of me. Um, but one thing I've been doing after communion is there's a really long prayer by Padre Pio, which he says, um, but I have a snippet of one of my favorite things, or one of my favorite quotes that he says, and he says, stay with me, Lord, because at the hour of my death, I want to remain united to you, if not by communion, at least by grace and love. And so what he's saying there is that even if he doesn't go to Mass, that even if he's not at adoration, that he will continue to encounter God through his, his friends, through his family, and that he will be searching through God no matter where he is in life. And so when you guys go home, I want you guys to look at your oven and remember God because that juicy ham is the same thing that the juicy tabernacle is also. So every time you guys see that oven, I want you guys to think about God. And... It's within those times that we were also doing the exhortation that we realized that no matter what object we got, we could always integrate God into it. Well, like, what was that game called, Forkleaf? What was that? Okay, <laughs> Fork Night. Yeah, and Pat was able to say something about it. So no matter if it's Forkleaf or like um, ham, there's always something that God can be in and that he is in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, in the tabernacle, with the juiciness, whatever it is, he will be there. Um, and so that brings us to other ways that we can also encounter him, is that when we encounter God, we must remember that he is our companion for life, that no matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, that God will always be there for you, and that you can depend on him. And that's what makes that into me you see so powerful, is that the relationship you have with like, your teacher, a doctor, or if you work like your manager, it's not the same. It's not a personal relationship. It's not a business, re it's just like purely a business relationship. And so we can always depend on him and talk to him no matter what it is. We don't have to worry about our doctor being on call because God is on call for us 24 seven. And so we go through dryness, we go through spiritual challenges sometimes, and we wonder like, why am I being put through this? Like, we sometimes were entitled, and it's something that I even struggled with when I'd be like, God, why did I lose my wallet when you know I gotta be in places in like five minutes? And we go through that dryness because it means that we're not searching for God and we're not trying to encounter him anymore. And when we realize that we stopped looking for him when we go to church, when we go out to go on a bike ride, when we play our sports, that's when our connection gets cut that it starts getting dry, and that's God calling you to come back to him, that he wants you to build a relationship with him again, and that you can always call him, because unlike 
a doctor or your teacher that you have to email, that God will always reply to you, God will always hear you, and maybe the reply isn't like an instant DM back, but he, there will be a message for you that, um, that God wants you to realize. And so living in worship, besides um, seeking God throughout our days, it also means leading others to worship. And so I got to give it up for, for Winsealand yesterday. Give it up for them because um, we, we had a good worship. It was going great. And then we experienced a little obstacle when um, we, we stuttered for the first couple of seconds of the last song. And it got a little awkward. And like I looked at Erica and I was like, are we still singing this? But you know, within, within that time, within that moment that we were just trying to still figure it out and trying to get our rhythm back, we realized that, or what Wincy Land did is that they, they didn't lead us through worship through like their pride or through um, fear. They did it out of perseverance and love that even though they messed up, they still pushed to finish the song for us and to finish this prayer for us. And they persevered for us. And in that moment, we were all able to pray with each other. And that even though it was a, we were a little off at some points, we got back on track and we were able to worship God with one another. So St. Patrick also says, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. And what St. Patrick is doing here and what he is saying is that the center of his life um, reflects around God, that he put God first um, no matter what the situation was. Um, and before this retreat on Thursday, I had confession with I'm really close to this priest. His name is Father Raphael. He's from Jacksonville. Um, I had confession with his pastor, so his boss. And when I walked into that room, it was face to face, which like, I don't really mind, but for this specific confession, I was terrified. I was like, this guy's gonna think I'm a fool. Like, I, I don't know why I'm walking in and I'm scared and I'm sweating. And Father Raphael joked around with him and was like, this girl's gonna be in here for an hour. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, but one thing that hit me when I was talking to Father John is he asked me, um, he has a Spanish accent, so it was like, were saints, were saints already born saints, yes or no? And I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> and he was like, no. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, those struggles and burdens that you went through is the same thing that Mother Teresa went through. And then he was like, no, the saints first had to go through all this spiritual dryness before they could ever become a saint. And he reminded me that even though I was like ashamed of what I was telling him and how, what I was going through, he was just like, you guys are all going through your struggles. You're still a student, you're still young, and you still have a lot of time to build your relationship with God. And all it takes for you to be closer to God is prayer that the moment that we pray to God is when our connection starts to boom, it starts to connect again. And we lead others to worship also by authentic friendships. So what I mean by that is going out of your comfort zone to meet other people, that we can encounter Christ um, through seeing the kindness of people's hearts. And I went to a conference and there was a story about how there was a homeless person and all the missionary did was smile at that homeless person, and the homeless person followed the missionary into church. And when the priest asked, what are you doing here? The, the, the homeless guy said, I saw that her heart was rejoicing, so I wanted to find out why it was, and that led me here to God. And that is what it takes to do, that is what it takes to build authentic friendships, that we can simply, within our day, since we have so much time, like the fact that I was singing deep, deep during high school, that just goes to show that there's no excuse for why we can't be praying or worshiping God, that there's always time. And so what, with that being said, it, it's like I challenge you guys to not only text or call or encounter the people in your households or in your areas, but also for your classmates in school, for kids at your home parishes, for people that you encounter, 
because in this day and age, we never know what anyone's going through. So we want them to experience the love of God that we get to experience with one another. And so there's so many ways to lead people towards God. Um, for starters, there's mission trips, which I'm going on one, so please pray for me, Malaysia, July 2018. Um, retreats, thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Um, retreats like this one, where we're all getting to learn and know God. And even more simply, what I just told you, how you can just even text or call your friend or how the missionary smiled at the homeless person. It's all about just being kind to others and praying for them. And the moment that you start becoming an authentic friend is the moment that people, that the others around you will get to encounter God. And so there's a difference between being a musician and a musician for God. And the difference between those two things is that for starters, whenever we do a worship, we first start off with prayer. And so all the, all the things that we do during worship, it's for the glory of God, that we have these God-given talents and we are giving it back to him. Whereas a normal musician like Justin Timberlake, which I mean, I still like him, but with the difference between us and him is that we, is that his is for glory, for fame, for success, for the money. Whereas we aren't doing this to get any money, to get any pride, but we are doing this to get to heaven, that we want to strive for sainthood no matter what we are doing. And so last, or wait, sorry. So being a fool for God, which is what we were doing with the air bands and clout nine, what is it, Christ walkers, um, slim milk, skim milk, whatever it was. Um, the dances we did last night, it like, it all led us to worship God, that even though we weren't a part of those groups, we were still cheering for them. We were still singing along to whatever they had to do. We were still clapping for them. And we were just building each other up. We were leading each other towards worship. And we even saw that during the distraction <laughs> activity, when we all just sat down on purpose while Miami was trying to sing, that it truly makes a big difference when you are focused, when you are disciplined, that your posture and the way you glorify God, when you change those two things, that is the moment that um, you are fully surrendering and that you have no more burdens on your chest and there is nothing for you to worry about besides your relationship with God. And with that, there, with that being said, um, we'd like to, we must seek God in our everyday lives. Um, I know even for me, I was like resistant and refusal two years ago to come to a surrender because if I don't play anything and if I don't sing, then what am I gonna be doing? And Pat, like at that time, he even made us fill out like, what can you do? And the only thing I've ever done that was music related was I wrote a song for a competition one time. So I put that down and it wasn't, when I got there, it wasn't about any of that. It wasn't about like how good of a musician we could be, but how good of a follower of God we could be through worship. And so whether or not you're, or whether you're being called to be a chapter head, a household head, um, something in your school, like a president, um, we're all called to do the same thing. That even though we aren't all gonna be a household leader, or um, a music minister, we are called to bring others closer to God. That is our mission, that we must be seeking ways to get people closer to God, and we must be also seeking for ways for us to get closer to God. And so no matter what it is, whether it be school, team sports, or the ministry, we can always encounter God through the ways I just told you, which is like just starting off your day with a simple, thank you God for waking me up. Um, that we don't have to do 45 minutes spontaneous praising. It just takes a second just to say, thank you, God. Um, this retreat was not about trying to get you guys to be on the JT level or the Justin Bieber level, but to get you on God's level, that the moment that you get onto God's level is that that is the moment that you become more inclined to reach heaven. And so, it wasn't also just about worships at events, but it's about our daily worship, that we don't stop here, that we continue growing, we continue striving, we continue 
trying to be the holiest people that we can be in order to lead others to Christ. And I challenge you guys, when you guys get back to your home fronts, I want you guys to do more than just encounter God through prayer and through, um, and through Mass. I want you guys to take the time to look at the beauty of what God has given you. And I want to just wrap up with a quick, quick story is that I went skateboarding the other day, which was like a health hazard for me because I already sprained my ankle in December for rock climbing. But like, as I was going down like this really deep slope, and I, I just remembered, I was like, dear God, I can't afford another broken ankle because I don't want to go back to Med Express. They laughed at me um, because they were like, weren't you harnessed? And I was like, no, I was bouldering. And so they were like, that wasn't wise. But the second I was going down and I could feel the wind and just the beauty of um, what God has given us, I don't know, it's weird to say, but I truly felt God in that moment that it's like faith, you, or it's like the wind. You can't see it, but you can feel it. And that's how I felt when I was going down. I was just like, this is God doing work, and this is God making sure I don't get hurt. Um, so with that, even though you can't see it, you can't see God, you can feel him. And no matter where we are, worship, household prayer, seek to encounter God, and seek to feel his presence. And with that being said, may God be praised.